Hello everybody, thank you for joining our Wellness Wednesday webinar. I hope you're all having a good week so far. Today um, I'm going to be talking to you about nutrition and immunity, so all about our immune system now that we're heading into the cooler months where a lot of us may be getting a few more colds um, and things like that. So hopefully today um, we'll give you lots of information of how you can try and give yourself the fighting chance of preventing those in the first place or trying to get better um, as quickly as you can. So today we're going to be talking about a bit of background. Um, so, you know, why have we chosen this topic um, and also going into an overview of the immune system in general. So just giving you a little bit of a background there. Um, I'm going to talk you through some of the key nutrients as well. So um, the key nutrients that are involved with helping our immune system. So you can keep an eye out for those. And then we're going to talk about what diet is best for our immune health. So um, kind of, you know, there's all different diets out there. We all have different ideas of maybe what healthy is, um, but what should we really be doing? Um, and also just thinking a little bit about supplements as well, because they're quite um, a hot topic at the moment. So I'll be talking about whether or not you should be thinking about taking those. Um, next is just considering all the other factors involved um, with our immune system. So nutrition, of course, is really important, but there's a lot of factors that, that go on in our lives and our lifestyle. So we'll take a look through all of those as well. Um, and then last but not least, we'll talk about immune health um, in terms of fact or fiction. So I'll kind of show you some um, typical ideas around immune health and we'll have a think about whether you think that's true or not. Um, so let's get going. So first for a little bit of background, just to say that during the pandem pandemic, interest in nutrition and immunity has increased, of course, because a lot of us are worried about our own health, we're worried about our loved ones, and it's just on the mind a bit more than usual. Um, but along with this, our confusion and a lot of misconceptions about the topic have also increased as well. Um, so that's why we wanted to cover this um, this time round for the webinar, just to try and make things a little bit clearer for everybody. And although, you know, different people, different companies, um, health gurus and stuff like that would have us believe that if we just drink all of the juice and we take all of the supplements uh, and we just do everything that they recommend, that these things will keep us safe. Of course, we want to believe that. But unfortunately, it's just not that straightforward. And we just can't guarantee that any particular thing is going to be able to keep us from getting ill. Um, so no single food or supplement can necessarily protect you from getting ill. Um, but that doesn't mean that having a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle won't help. Um, because definitely there's things that we can do to make sure that our immune system is working as well as it can um, to protect us as much as possible. So just to give a little bit of an overview of the immune system, um, the immune system is a complex network of cells and kind of chemical compounds that help defend the body against infections. OK, so it's designed to protect us. And kind of general, you know, typical healthy, fully functioning immune system is able to distinguish between healthy tissue and unhealthy tissue or unwanted substances. Um, so it's able to recognise these um, and kind of put in a plan of action to try and get those out as soon as possible. Um, and again, it also rec recognises and removes dead and faulty cells as well, which is also really important. But sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't always get it right. Um, so, for example, um, if a person has a certain health condition or maybe is taking certain medications, it can impact how the immune system works. So it's not always um, on tip top form, unfortunately. Uh, some examples of these would be things like autoimmune diseases and allergies. So sometimes the immune system might uh, mistake um, something which um, is a healthy tissue as unhealthy, uh, for example, and launch an attack. So um, some examples of those would be arthritis or psoriasis, um, a skin condition where kind of the body starts to attack itself. So um, next thing, I thought it would be really helpful if we go through some of the key nutrients involved with supporting the immune system. Um, this might look a little bit overwhelming and don't worry, these aren't on here because I'm expecting you to remember them and to go away and think, right, where am I going to get this, this, this and this? Uh, not at all. Um, but I thought we could just go through some of the main ones um, and then we can have a look at what foods they're in and hopefully that'll be helpful. So first one we have is vitamin A. 
uh, you can see on here, this helps to support ourselves, the cells which identify the pathogen. So identify the, the things that we don't want around. Vitamin B6 helps to produce new immune cells and also helps them to communicate with each other. Vitamin B12 helps to produce new immune cells. Um, again, vitamin C also helps um, the kind of the cells to attack the pathogens and also to maintain our skin. So vitamin C is really important for our skin um, to prevent infection, for example. And then we've got copper, who generally helps to protect um, and also to fuel the immune cells as well. Um, so let's have a look at what foods um, these uh, can be found in. So we've got vitamin A, liver, cheese, dark green leafy vegetables, orange fruits and vegetables. B6, things like poultry, fish, egg yolk, marmite, sesame seeds, some fruit and vegetables. Vitamin B12 can be found in meat, fish, shellfish, milk, so dairy and uh, meat products a lot of the time, and also in marmite and some breakfast cereals as well. Vitamin C, mainly in different types of fruit and vegetables, um, and copper can be found in all sorts of places, so bread, again, breakfast cereals, fish, pulses, seeds, um, and some fruit and vegetables as well. So that might sound <laughs> like a lot of different things, and you might be thinking, how am I going to remember all of these things? Uh, well, the point is, the reason why I really wanted to include this in the webinar is to show you that you don't need to remember because all these vitamins, they're in so many different places that if we're eating a varied diet, um, we're going to be able to get what we need from them. OK, so I hope that kind of illustrates that um, and shows you that, you know, it's not just fruit and veg, it's not just these, you know, one superfood where you're going to be able to get what you need from. It's in loads of different places. And on to the next page. So I've just included a few more as well. So um, iron, so it helps maintain immune cell health. Zinc helps produce new cells as well and also helps us to fight off viruses. Vitamin D is an interesting one, which I'll also mention um, in some of the future slides as well. So its role is not clear at the moment, um, but typically people who have a low vitamin D level have an kind of a reduced immune response. So it, it seems to be linked somehow. Selenium, so helps produce new cells, helps to strengthen our response to infection, and folate helps to produce new cells as well. So again, just having a look at some of these places that we can find these nutrients. So you can see just as on the first page, they're in a really wide range of foods. So all sorts of stuff. Um, vitamin D is a little bit of an exception. It can be a bit tricky for us to find that. So again, I'll mention that um, in some of the future slides, but all of the others, they can be found in meat sources, mostly they can be found in dairy sources and um, different fruits, vegetables um, and things like that. OK, so again, no need to worry as long as we're focusing on getting a good balanced diet. So um, just to kind of summarise that, clearly, you know, the most important thing for our immune system is that we're getting a really good variety. It's sometimes easy to forget how important it is to have a variety when we're just focused on oh, how can we be healthy? You know, we'll just eat chicken and broccoli or salads um, when that's not really what's going to help our body um, overall. So. This is the Eat Well Guide. I'm not going to go into it in loads of detail today, but you can find this for free online. Um, if you just search Eat Well Guide, it's from Public Health England. So it's based on a lot of research. And this is what the government recommends that the general population base their diet around, OK, to have a healthy diet. So you can see the green section is fruit and vegetables. The um, yellow section is carbohydrates and the pink section is protein and the blue section is dairy. There's also a little section for oils and spreads there, um, a little section on the left for snacks um, and some mention of water and nutrition labels too. So that's how we want our overall diet to look OK. But again, trying to get as much variety in there as possible um, is the best way to kind of look after ourselves and look after our immune health. So I also wanted to just touch on supplements, which I know I mentioned at the very start, um, to say that we do not have enough evidence that these can necessarily prevent or treat viral infections. There is some evidence that vitamin C may reduce the duration and severity of a cold. Um, so often, you know, you might have heard vitamin C, you know, thinking about orange juice, different things like that. Um, a lot of people may want to take that when they're ill, and that's absolutely fine. Typically, it's, it's not something that's going to do any harm, um, but there's only some evidence. So maybe it's not, you know, it's not really, really strong evidence necessarily. If you are worried that your diet 
isn't providing you with everything that you need so perhaps you kind of you don't eat certain foods or you cut out certain food groups then you could consider taking a supplement so for example like a multivitamin um just so you don't have to worry it relieves your stress and you know that you're just getting that extra in there just in case but for most of us if you are eating a variety of those foods shown on the eat well guide here you should be absolutely fine um, and in general it's more beneficial to get our nutrients from food because Within our food, there's a lot of other, other compounds going on there that can have a benefit to us. For example, things like fibre. If you're just taking vitamin C and things like that, instead of eating fruit and vegetables, you're going to miss out on a lot of the other goodness okay, that you would get from the whole food. Um, so just to touch on vitamin D, um, which I mentioned in the last slide. So vitamin D is maybe one of the only ones that is an exception. Um, so it is advised that um, most of us, pretty much everybody, um, general population, takes vitamin D during the winter months. There's also um, quite a lot of um, suggestions recently to consider taking one every day of the year. Um, for more information on this, you can head to the NHS website or speak to your GP who will be able to tailor that a bit more specifically to you. Um, but it's quite important in the winter months, um, especially when it comes to, you know, thinking about our immune health. Um, we're not spending as much time outside where often we get a lot of our vitamin D from the sunlight um, and there's just limited foods where we can find it. OK, so please have a look into that um, for yourselves and your families if you haven't already. Okay, so next slide, I thought it would just be fun to just include a few examples of some popular foods to eat when we're ill from around the world. So um, we've got some kind of lemon and honey drink on here. We've got Vegemite or Marmite on toast. We've got tomato soup. Uh, we've got Lucasade. We've got ginger ale. We've got a uh, pho, so like a Vietnamese soup, um, like broth with meat and vegetables and herbs. We've got congee, so it's kind of like a rice porridge, which is really popular in China. Um, and then we've got chicken noodle soup, which is very popular over in the US. Um, so I thought it would be nice to just have a think about what's your favourite thing to eat when you're ill. Um, it's easy to get a bit stressed and think, oh, you know, what's the most nutritious thing? What's going to help get me better, which is really important, of course. But you can see from some of these things as well that sometimes we just want um, comforting food. I know when I'm ill, I basically just turn into a child again and I just want the foods that I used to have as a kid or what my mum used to give me when I was ill as a kid. Um, and, you know, sometimes when we feel really, really bad, it's hard for us to eat. So even if, you know, maybe we're not eating the healthiest thing in the world, providing our body with energy and with food that we're happy to eat and that we will eat sometimes is the priority there. Um, so yeah, there you go, some examples there. And the next thing is um, just thinking about the other factors, okay? So aside from nutrition, what other factors are involved with the immune system? So what else can we kind of think about? What can we do to try and help our immune system? So first we've got age, sex and genetics. So um, the majority of kind of variation within our immune health um, and how our immune systems work tend to be put down to these differences mostly. Um, health and medications can also influence it. So I mentioned it briefly earlier that some people may have a weakened immune system because of a health condition, because of vaccination status or because of some medications that they may be on. Hygiene, of course, plays a part. So personal hygiene. So do you wash your hands? Um, you know, food hygiene, even just of the environment around you can influence whether or not you may be more likely to get ill and just the people around you as well. Of course, if other people maybe aren't practicing good hygiene, we could be more likely to get ill from them. So um, it's kind of a big one, hygiene. Uh, sleep. So studies show that people who don't get enough quality sleep or not enough quantity of sleep either are more likely to get ill. Um, and also that if we struggle to get enough sleep when we are ill, it can take us longer to recover. So sleep is really, really important for all the functions in our body. The next thing is stress. So stress hormones can suppress the effectiveness of our immune system. Um, so that can mean that we're more susceptible to getting ill. You may have kind of heard this, you know, often people will say, oh, you know, I'm feeling really run down. Maybe you've been really busy at work the last couple of weeks. And just as soon as you, you know, you think you get to the weekend, then you'll you'll get ill. So we're a bit more vulnerable when we're going through stress. 
Smoking and alcohol can also make a big difference as well. So there's a lot of research to suggest that smokers are generally more prone to infection because smoking can affect the way that our cells function. So maybe they're not always able to do their job um, in the way that they're designed to. And also alcohol as well. So alcohol is quite hard on the body. So when it's consumed in excess, if we may be drinking more than we should be, it can also have an impact on our immune system. It can make us more likely to get ill. Hydration. So hydration is really, really important. Our bodies are around 60% water. So in general, you know, most of our body processes, we really do need water. We need to be hydrated. Um, one example of this is the fact that obviously, you know, our nutrients, it travels around in our blood. So we need water in order for those nutrients to get around to our body to, to get to their kind of destination where they're needed. Um, and it can also help um, to remove kind of um, unwanted substances from the body as well. So for example, through um, urine. Last but not least, um, for the other factors, we've got activity levels. So um, in general, researchers agree that being active regularly um, can improve immune function. And this is because it kind of gets the immune system going, it gets the cells patrolling the body. So almost like a practice um, session of going around, making sure that everything's OK. Um, so it can be really, really helpful. Um, even things just like walking regularly, cycling, running, um, it'll all help. So there are a lot of the really key other factors. Of course, I'm sure there's some others as well that I hope we haven't mentioned today, um, but there's lots of things to think about. OK, so. Next slide is our immune health fact or fiction. Um, so. I've got a few different kind of typical immune health beliefs or maybe some common sort of things that go around that phrases people say. Um, so let's have a think about whether you think these are fact or fiction or not. So the first one is allergies are a sign of a weak immune system. What do you think there? So this is actually fiction, so it's not true. So consider allergies um, more of the kind of being an overvigilant immune system. So it's more as though um, it's working on overdrive. It's almost being um, too sensitive um, and kind of spotting different things and identifying them as being harmful um, rather than one that's kind of weak or not really working too well. The next one is we are more likely to get sick during the cold weather. Do you think that's fact or fiction? OK, so this one is a fact. So we are more likely to get sick in general when the weather is cold. Um, so it's a little bit it's a little bit different than we might think. So often when we're out in the cold, we might say, oh, you know, I'm going to catch a cold. I'm going to catch a cold. And a lot of the time people might say to you, you know, no, you don't actually get cold from the cold. It's not the cold itself. Um, but there is definitely a link there. We tend to, you know, get all the colds and flus and different things during the colder months. Um, but it's not thought to be. Again, it's not a cause and effect relationship. It's more just a link there. Um, some of the reasons why people often think is more like behavioural changes that happen in the cold months. So it could be just generally staying inside more often, kind of being in close proximity to people. And also as well, it's thought that some pathogens might survive better in the cold. Um, so there may just be more going around in the winter months as well. So the next one is feed a cold, starve a fever. So this is really popular one. Um, what do you think about this one, fact or fiction? Okay, so this is fiction. Um, so imagine trying to fight a battle on an empty stomach. So that's how your immune system will be feeling if you don't eat at all whilst you're ill. So although, you know, um, these kind of popular traditional phrases and things that we say to each other when we're ill, um, it's kind of a, a nice thing to sometimes believe and kind of focus on. It makes us feel a bit more in control that we, we know what to do. Um, but it's definitely better to fuel your body whenever you can, OK, to give yourself a fighting chance of winning that battle. Next one is taking supplements will help me get better faster. Fact or fiction? OK, so that's also fiction. So again, as we mentioned earlier, taking a multivitamin can be a good idea to stay healthy if you think you're missing out on certain foods or certain nutrients for whatever reason. But if you're already in a healthy, balanced diet, you, you're likely getting what you need. So the evidence doesn't show that it will make any difference um, to you if you're already having what you, you need in the first place. 
OK, so last one, um, cleaning too much can mean we don't develop a strong immune system. So I thought this one will be really interesting because there's a lot of talk about this and about how being too clean maybe can link to allergies and getting ill and things like that. So this one is actually fiction too. So there are links to people having cleaner homes and also maybe the prevalence of allergies or asthma um, in, in people in the house or, for example, children in the house. But it's not thought to be actually because of the removal of the germs or removal of the bacteria. It's thought because a lot of cleaning products are quite harsh and it can have an impact on the lungs, on the skin, etc. So, um, yeah, I thought that one was really interesting because it's quite a hot topic with lots of people talking about should we stop being so clean? all the time. OK, so that's it for me today. So just to summarise, um, it's really important to focus on getting a healthy, balanced diet, which is full of variety to support your immune system. That's the best thing that we can do, as well as just thinking a little bit about those other factors as well. Nutrition is important, but again, there's lots of other things um, that we can think about and that we can incorporate into our lifestyle to help our immune system to work at its best. Be mindful of marketing and false promises, because if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, again, try and remember that there's no one thing that's going to make us better. There's no one thing that's going to protect us from being unwell. There's no need to spend a fortune to have a good immune, a good immune health either. OK, so it should be accessible to everybody. Um, so just try and again, think about that eat well guide, try and get the balance that you can. Um, and then you should be in a really good position. Last but not least, I just wanted to say um, to remind you about the wellness inbox. So our email is written here now. So ess.wellness at compass groupcouk So please, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback about the webinar, please do let us know. Um, and also, if you've got any general questions about nutrition, well-being as a whole, then we're always there um, to answer your queries. OK, so please let us know. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for attending today. Um, I really hope that it's been helpful for you. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your week and hopefully um, this will help you kind of, you know, fight off some of those colds, um, prevent you getting too many colds and different things like that as we head into um, the colder months.